You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us into a kingdom of priests for our God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Today, Friday, the sixth week of uh, Easter, but also in this special moment. Now we are in the uh, moment of waiting for Pentecost, the great novena, the mother of all novenas, uh, those uh, nine days between yesterday, the ascension of our Lord and the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, time for prayer and uh, asking that the Holy Spirit would also uh, renew in us right, those same gifts, uh, virtues, uh, powers, fruits that he did in the early church in the life of the apostles. Uh, today, well, first of all, I'd like to welcome, I'm not sure if our uh, staff and students from St. Peter's School are with us again today. Uh, supposedly they were with us yesterday for the solemnity of the Ascension, but if they're with us again today, welcome also to all of you. We'll be offering our Mass today for uh, the eternal rest of James Tierney, uh, also praying for Alicia Rodriguez, uh, the aunt of one of our students who passed away this week, and also praying for Elsa Gutierrez, uh, who passed away yesterday, asking for God's mercy on them and that they, they may also follow our Lord to the light, joy, peace of his heavenly kingdom. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, raise us up, we pray, to the author of our salvation, who is seated at your right hand, so that when our Savior comes again in majesty, those you have given new birth in baptism may be clothed with blessed immortality. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night while Paul was in Corinth, the Lord said to him in a vision, do not be afraid, go on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack and harm you, for I have many people in this city. He settled there for a year and a half and taught the word of God among them. But when uh, Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him to the tribunal, saying, This man is inducing people to worship God contrary to the law. When Paul was about to reply, Gallio spoke to the Jews. If it were a matter of some crime or malicious fraud, I should with reason hear the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a question of arguments over doctrine and titles and your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them away from the tribunal. Then all seized, they all seized Sosthenes, the synagogue official, and beat him in few, full view of the tribunal. But none of this was of concern to Gallio. Paul remained for quite some time, 
and after saying farewell to the brothers, he sailed for Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. At, Sin at, at Sencharea, he had shaved his head because he had taken a vow. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is, God is king of all the earth. God is king of all the earth. All you peoples clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness, for the Lord the Most High is awesome, is, great, is a great king over all the earth. God is king over all the earth. He brings people under us, nations under our feet. He chooses for us our inheritance, the glory of Jacob, whom he loves. God is king of all the earth. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid, amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God is King of all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ had to suffer and ri to rise from the dead and so enter into his glory. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be in my heart and my lips, that I may worthy proclaim your gospel in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I thought I would begin, as I always do, with just a few words about the Acts of the Apostles, uh, but I prefer to focus myself today a little bit more on, on the Gospel. Uh, but first, uh, I forgot to mention that you are probably seeing this as a recording. Uh, sorry about that. I'm actually celebrating the Mass very early in the morning uh, today, both the English and Spanish Masses, uh, because we have two funerals, uh, and one of them is in New Jersey, and uh, I'm not able, Father Stephen is out today, so I'm recording or celebrating both Masses. Uh, so you're watching them for the first time uh, live. I am live, but uh, sorry about that. So... Uh, We'll begin live again tomorrow, but I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to uh, participate in, in Mass through the transmission at our normal time at 9 o'clock. Uh, so what can we learn from the Acts of the Apostles today? Well, we, first of all, we learned that Paul is no longer in Athens, right? When we finished on Wednesday, uh, Paul was in Athens, and he's having a difficult time in the capital of the uh, Greek intellectual world uh, making disciples. Uh, they more or less scoffed at him, uh, joked about his teaching. Now we find him in another city called Corinth, and hopefully that name sounds familiar because Paul uh, later on wrote two letters to the Corinthians, right? And the Corinthians are people from Corinth. Corinth was not that far, a few hundred miles from Athens, and it was an incredibly important uh, port actually had a port uh, both uh, facing Rome, but also facing what is now Turkey. And so it was a crossroads of merchants and trade uh, roads from all the ports of the empire sort of crossed there. But also because of that, not only merchants and goods, but also ideas, right? And it, even in its own time, uh, had a certain fame and not a good fame. Uh, it was known as a very pagan, place, and that was from Romans or Athenians or Greeks who saw the degradation of the moral life in Corinth. It was a port town and uh, sailors and merchants and uh, very 
unhealthy, spiritually, morally. Uh, the Greeks themselves said that anything that was evil or uh, degrading in the empire would some or other find its way to Corinth to sink roots. Uh, so it was a tough environment, different than Athens, but not an easy place. Uh, the normal reading for Thursday, yesterday we celebrated the Ascension, but the normal reading was Paul going there and going to the synagogue, going to his Jewish brothers, uh, and not finding success there either. In fact, we hear today that they basically threw him out. Uh, so we see Paul uh, not coming up with much success in this travel, right? He's sent by the Holy Spirit first to Greece, he goes to Philippi, a little bit of success, but then he finds himself put in jail. He escapes there, basically thrown out of Philippi, goes to Athens, not much success, comes to Corinth, uh, not very easy here either. And so the Lord appears to him uh, to strengthen him, to give him courage, to uh, animate him again in, in his mission. Uh, and that's Paul, Paul just going, okay, where I'm going to keep on uh, sowing seeds. I'm going to continue preaching for those that God is calling. And, and that idea that God had people in that city of Corinth. Paul hadn't met them yet because some of these are mine, you know, and I want you to stay here uh, because they need to be saved. I have people in mind, right? Those who are going to respond to my call. And it's important even in our own families and friends uh, in our apostolic work uh, in the church to not give up, to realize God is calling, right? It might be surprising people, it may not be the people you would expect that God is calling uh, or God is working in their lives. Um, and we see that later on in, in Corinth. Some of the lowest, morally lowest people were those who accepted the gospel. Not different than in Jesus' time, but uh, that idea that God is calling these people. They are sons and daughters of God. And although they are rejecting, they don't understand, they're living in ignorance, um, what the Lord wants of me is, how can I sow seeds in their lives? Uh, and obviously, maybe it's not with preaching. I mean, Paul's a missionary, he's studied, he's uh, intellectually capable. But uh, to not give up on all those people around us, family members, friends, even though they appear to be far from God, um, have turned their backs on God. We don't give up in prayer for them. We don't give up in sacrifices for them. We don't give up in our testimony to them. Right? that we continue independent of how they treat us or the words they throw at us or the way they uh, make fun of how we live, that I always give that testimony. So Paul gives us an example of not giving up in the difficulties that he's facing and to understand that it's God who uh, needs me in that moment to save people around me. But more important, I think, is the reading from the, the gospel. And... Uh, gee, remember that we're in the context of the Last Supper, so Jesus is uh, speaking of his passion, uh, his death, his suffering, uh, that he's going to leave the, the apostles, his disciples, that he's going to the Father, and obviously all of this produces sadness, um, not surprising. Uh, but he also uh, tells them the, the good news, right? he also gives them that spark of hope, that I will return. I will see you again. The, he speaks of both sadness and joy, in other words. And what is the source uh, of sadness and joy in the life of a disciple? You can almost boil it down to this, that sadness is not seeing Jesus. And joy is returning to see him again. Right? You can almost define a disciple as one who is sad when he does not see Jesus, and he is one who is happy when he sees him again. And that's really a fruit of love, right? I at least have had many experiences of that in, in my own life, the sadness of having to say goodbye to people. Every time I go to visit my family, you know, once a year for my mom's birthday or my dad's birthday, it's twice a year, uh, I see them, but there's that saying goodbye. Getting, going to the airport, getting on the plane, you know, there's that last hug, uh, and there's always tears, you know, the sadness of saying goodbye, especially at their age, you don't know when you might see them again, uh, and then the joy of returning, you know, when I go home, uh, not this year, because unfortunately of the coronavirus, I miss both of their birthdays, but hopefully here in the summertime, 
but that is a sign of love, that sadness we feel when we have to uh, leave somebody, when we have to say goodbye to somebody. When I left Mexico, the missions, right, the sadness, um, and I was able to visit once afterwards, but I'm not there, I'm not participating in life. There's a sadness of saying goodbye, many tears. Um, so that is the life uh, of a disciple who truly loves our Lord. And from there we have you know, a question then. Um, how is my experience uh, of our Lord? Am I also one that makes me sad to lose Jesus, to say goodbye to Jesus? Right? Um, I think for some, the answer is yes. And thankfully, I think it's many in this parish who have that sadness when we had to close the churches or not celebrate masses, when we couldn't have you know, meetings and reunions, we couldn't have uh, retreats, and when we couldn't celebrate Holy Week, there was sadness. Uh, sadness because I wasn't as close to the Lord as I normally was. I had to say goodbye, in that sense, to the Eucharist, right? Um, hopefully, yes. Hopefully, there's also that sadness when we lose Jesus for sin, right? Um, I cut myself off from him. And hopefully that also, my conscience, you know, afterwards uh, reflecting you know, before confession, uh, to feel that contrition, that sadness, because I've lost Jesus, I've lost my relationship with him. Are we glad when we meet him again? Do we look forward those moments, even if it's prayer in my house, do I look forward to that? Or am I indifferent? Do I look forward to going to mass, to my encounter with him? Is that something that's going to produce joy? Hopefully, yes. And hopefully, when we finally return to celebrating Masses, and yesterday, Cardinal Dolan mentioned those pa uh, steps that we still need to take, but they're, yeah, coming closer each day, that we will be able to celebrate Mass. And hopefully, it will be a joyous, and hopefully, we'll be doing everything possible to take advantage again of the Eucharist of Mass. So there's, it's a good question. How do I uh, react? Am I the one who is sad to lose Jesus? Am I the one who rejoices to see him again, to have him again? And I hopefully it's also a help in this present reality in which we are living the, the reality of this epidemic, the coronavirus, uh, that same reality of sadness, the sadness of having lost family members, of friends who have died, or simply the sadness of seeing others, friends, suffering because they have lost family members family members, or parents. Uh, so there, there is a real sadness. But Jesus spoke about a joy that nobody and nothing can take away. Right? That's rooted in something more profound, deeper than the reality of this present suffering. Right? In one sense, he speaks of heaven, right? the definitive joy, right? and our relationship with him not only in heaven, but even here on earth. There should be some, although we do suffer, there's sadness, there's um, failures, uh, there's um, our, our own sinful life, our mistakes, they, they do cause sadness um, or depression or uh, frustration. But a disciple who lives in that relationship with Christ, in a certain sense plugged into, even now on earth, the joy of heaven, a relationship with God, that will last for all eternity. Even now, he experiences some of that joy always that even balances out the sadness and the discouragement that we can face for the circumstances and troubles and storms in, in this life. Uh, hopefully that also helps us in that sadness that we experience for the loss of family members or friends, right? That we remember uh, that our goal is to see Jesus again. Jesus is waiting to see me again in heaven. But I will see not only Jesus, if that I'm in that relationship with him, that's my hope, right? That's the, the joy I, I'm walking towards. But also all those who are with Jesus, right? I see the Blessed Virgin, he'll be there, and the angels and the saints, but also all of those loved ones uh, who are there with Christ, who have lived close to him. And, and that's the, the joy that even now we can experience that hope that produces joy that one day I will also see them again. So let us ask, particularly the Holy Spirit, you know, we're
in this novena of the Holy Spirit to ask to join or live like the uh, disciples with the Blessed Virgin in prayer and, and fasting for the coming of the Holy Spirit because we know that it's the Holy Spirit that is the source of our joy in this life. Right? Uh, we should be praying for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but also the fruits of the Holy Spirit, right? those 12 fruits. And uh, part of those fruits of the Holy Spirit are our joy, right? our, our peace. And uh, the Holy Spirit can even now in the midst of this suffering uh, maintain us and give us that spark of hope, uh, of joy, of, of peace that we need so we can continue walking with our Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us offer our prayers and intentions uh, this day. We have all gathered here, dear brothers and sisters, to celebrate the mysteries of our redemption. Let us ask, therefore ask, Almighty God, that the whole world may be watered from the, these springs of blessing and eternal life. For the church that like the early disciples, we will boldly proclaim Jesus to others, revealing the movement of the Holy Spirit through our words and our actions, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are in public office, that uh, God, the Holy Spirit might inspire in them prudence and right judgment, giving them wisdom as they seek to serve and lead us through the difficulties of this epidemic. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the human family, that God might deliver us from the effects of the coronavirus, putting an end to the suffering that we are experiencing. We keep safe all those workers, especially our doctors and nurses, who continue to seek to bring healing to those who are sick. Uh, may he also come to the aid of all those who are suffering economically, the loss of work or jobs. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let's also lift up all of our brothers and sisters who are sick, especially those who are uh, on respirators or intensive care units, uh, those who are gravely uh, in danger, that God's hand might be upon them to restore them to health, to their families and friends. Particularly, let us lift up uh, the members of our parish, Fernando Ayala, Lourdes Gutierrez, Lucila Silva, Julio Cesar Perez, Joey Rosalinda Torres, Pedro Martinez, Jose Melcor, Mario Silva, Jose Chacha, Rene Carcamo, Maximo Carduño, Jose Enriquez, Arcadio Torribio, Miguel Mellado, Mellado, Magali y Jose Miguel Roque, y Marbella Pelmosen. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And also lifting up all those who have passed away, uh, asking God to bring them into his kingdom of light and joy and peace, praying for the consolation uh, that God would console those who are suffering the loss of family and friends. Let's particularly pray for members of our parish, Pedro Reyes, Jacinto Morel, Graciela Vasquez, Francisca Villafaña, Efigenio Aguilar, Elena Cortez, Jose Guevara, Candido Silva, Alicia Rodriguez, Jesus Mendez, and for those we are offering our Mass today, uh, I, uh, James uh, Tierney, uh, Alicia Rodriguez, and Elsa Gutierrez, uh, who we are going to uh, celebrate her funeral this morning. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May your mercy, we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you, so that what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The humble spirit and country of the of the Lord, our nature of sacrifices will be pleasing to you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accepting compassion, Lord, we pray the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly estate, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have, the, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us as they our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. May the mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive. Jesus Christ, our living God, by the will of the Father. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. This moment as we do every morning, I invite us to pray together the prayer for spiritual communion as our Lord sent the Holy Spirit infusing uh, the life of God in the early church uh, that he might also in this day infuse those graces that we need that normally we receive in the Eucharist so that we can also live right, that peace and joy and hope amidst the sadness of our current situation. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we finish, let us uh, ask Our Lady's protection on our families, on ourselves, our friends all those who need her intercession today. 
O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick. At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, Our Lady of New York, know what we need, and we are certain that you will provide so that as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test, and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. A reminder that uh, we have a rosary at 6 p.m. today, or every day as we come to the end of this month of May, uh, also praying for the Holy Spirit, the prayers of the Novena, Novena for the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll be here again uh, at 9 o'clock, uh, live as, as always. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. You may go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone.